Hello friends, it's Sam. Uh, today we're painting a canvas. It's going to be this adorable corgi canvas. So I'm going to be painting it with you step by step. If I'm moving too fast for you, feel free to pause your video. A couple things before we start though, just so you know we're using acrylic paint today that's a little bit different. It's actually very different from our pottery paint. Pottery paint will come out of your clothes. Um, the acrylic paint won't. Um, so that being said, you want to put on a smock or maybe a t-shirt that you don't really care if you have paint on it. Um, and you definitely want to cover up your table, maybe work outside if it's a nice day. Um, also, if you want to play music, I didn't put any music in the video, but you should put on something you like. I like Ariana Grande. I like to listen to her while I paint. So if you want to put that on in the background, uh, make sure that you're comfortable and you're going to have a good time painting. All right, guys. So as we paint, I'm going to be giving you some fun facts about corgis. Um, a lot of them are pretty cool, actually. Some of them are basic facts about corgis, but um, one of them, actually, I found out that there is a an event in Southern California just with thousands of corgis. But I'll tell you about that later. All right, guys, so happy painting. Uh, put on some music, set up your space, and enjoy. I can't wait to see what you guys paint. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is set up our workspace. Make sure that you have an apron on or some clothes that you don't really care that much with paint that on them. You're gonna wanna set out a placemat just to protect your furniture, because remember this paint is permanent, okay? You can use an old newspaper, you can use the placemats that we gave you, you can use a garbage bag if that feels better for you, whatever works, okay? All right, so you're also gonna want to have a bowl of water nearby or a cup of water. I'm using a plastic cup just because um, the paint, I just wanna be able to throw it out after. It's gonna be kind of hard to wash the acrylic paint out. So I would use something that you could throw away or you don't really mind if it stays dirty, okay? You're also gonna wanna have your paints nearby. I have these small versions of the paint. You're gonna have these little containers. They're the same thing, the same colors, everything like that, okay? You're also gonna wanna have a paper towel to dry off your brushes when you're done using them. Okay, we do wash our brushes between using colors just to make sure they're clean. Uh, you don't want any excess water in your paint, so that's why we dry them. You're also gonna wanna have a paper plate to mix your colors on. That's gonna be like your palette, okay? What I suggest doing is just scooping a little bit of each color onto your palette as we work. For example, if I tell you to mix your pink with your white, I wouldn't just mix the pink directly into your little tub of white because then you have no more plain white. So you're going to want to put it onto this paper plate and mix it there, okay? So my friends, the glasses on the Corgi are optional. If you do want them on your finished product, you're going to just take a Sharpie marker. Um, I recommend a Sharpie ma marker and not a washable marker. Usually washable markers will smudge, so get a Sharpie or a permanent marker and just outline the glasses. I'm sorry if it's hard to see my tracing from the camera. I know it's a bit light. Okay, so I'm just going to trace over those glasses. That way I can paint over them later and still see them. So I've outlined the glasses in Sharpie because I want to put them in there. They are optional. If you don't want your glasses in your painting, just don't outline them. You can paint right over those lines that we traced for you, okay? So after you trace that, that's an optional step. The real first step is you're going to paint white, okay? We're going to be painting white on the bone that the corgi is holding. You're going to be painting white on his snout right over here on that stripe on his head, and on his belly, his front legs, his back feet. So as I paint, I'll point everything out. Um, I also have our first fact about corgis, so it's not really a fact, just like a about, okay? So right now I'm painting the bone, by the way. Um, so you can pause this if you need some more time if I finish before you do, no problem. All right, so you're gonna paint the bone, and while I paint that, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about corgis. Corgis are short, they come from a place called Pem Pembrokeshire, which is a place in the country Wales. Okay, so corgis are Welsh. That's why they're called the Welsh corgis. They're also really short. If you've ever seen a corgi in person, he's like got really, really short legs, um, which I think makes them super, super cute. 
um, but they're known for being short. They usually grow anywhere from 10 inches to 12 inches, which is a foot at the shoulder, so they're really not tall unless you mix them with another animal or another breed. Pretty much going to be that height. All right, so now I'm going to paint the snout, everything except for the nose. If you do get some white on the nose, though, no worries. All right. Now I'm going to paint his chest and his front legs and his back two paws, okay? Not his back legs here, just those front little paws, or those back paws, okay? Corgis also live 12 to 14 years, which is a really long time. I did hear that smaller dogs tend to live longer. Um, I don't really know why. Corgis usually grow up to 30 pounds, which is not that much weight. They're pretty light. I did hear that they have a lot of energy though. I feel like a lot of small dogs do. If any of you have corgis, you should send Clay Nation a picture of your finished canvas when you're all done and your corgi. He would love to see them. Okay, so as you're painting the white, a lot of people might say, well, hey, Sam, the canvas is white. Why do I have to paint, you know, his chest and everything white? That's a great question. Um, I just like doing it because I think it makes it look more finished, okay? Because you can still see some brush strokes. Uh, if you don't paint it, it just looks unpainted. To me, I think it looks unfinished. Um, but I suggest doing that. And also, sometimes there can be some small marks just from us tracing it with the carbon paper. So this will cover up all those marks. All right, and then I did the bone, the chest, the front feet, the back feet, and now I'm just going to do, oh, and I did his snout too, I can't forget that. You're just gonna wanna do that front stripe on his forehead there. Okay, so again, don't, don't be afraid to paint over the, the glasses. You can still see the lines through the paint. Okay, and it's okay if you go a little bit outside the lines. The great thing is this is white, so it's super easy to cover. So the second part to this first step, so you're gonna just take a little bit of black, just a dot, remember a little bit of black goes a really long way. Okay, you're going to take your small brush, you're gonna dip it in the black, not a lot at all, you can see how little I have on there. And then I'm going to mix it in another place on my plate, that way I still have some pure white. I'm gonna mix it and get a gray. All right, so what we're doing now is we're shading. I kind of want to make that gray a little bit lighter. All right, so shading. What we're going to do is take our small brush. This is a great way to separate the bone from the dog's chin down here. So what you're going to do is find that line. You should still be able to see through your white, see the line for the bone, underline it. Okay? So you're painting on the dog's chin, not on the bone. You're painting right beneath the bone. Just making some gray. Shouldn't be too dark, okay? Just some shading right there. And if you want to blend it a little bit more, you can always take some pure white. And just kind of like mix it in while the gray is still wet. Almost turns into like an ombre effect, okay? All right, now you're gonna take that same gray, paint right underneath his chest here. You're, right now you're painting on his front legs, not on the chest, just below it, okay? And you can take the same gray and paint right at this line where his front paws touch his back paws. You're painting on the back paw, not on the front paw, just next to it, okay? All right, and one more time, you're just gonna take that gray and paint right above his nose. Okay, kind of just makes a shadow. All right, and then after that, you can wash your brush and set it down. All right, so now we are going to paint the background. The background, I have light blue. So you can take some of your cobalt blue, put it on your plate. All right, and then I have, still have a lot of pure white here. I think that's that's a good amount for a background. So I'm going to take, actually, let's start with our small brush, okay? I'm going to 
going to take a little bit of blue and add it to your white. Now remember, you can always, you want to start off light. If you make light blue and it's still a little too light for you, you can always add some more um, blue. Okay, so it's a little bit harder to make things lighter once they're already dark, I find. So you want to add a little bit at a, at a time. This is a little light for me, so I'm just going to dip my brush right back into that blue. Okay, still a little light. All right, and you want to make enough of this to cover the whole background, because remember, once you run out, you're going to have to mix the exact same color. That could be a little bit hard. Okay. All right, so I'm really liking this blue. I think that's good. If you want to make it darker, go ahead and make it darker. This is your art, my friends. You could also make it lighter, whatever you want to do. Okay. You're just going to take your small brush. I find it easier if you outline the main image and then with a small brush and then use your big brush and fill in the rest. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to start by just doing an outline of the outside of the corgi. So like I'm not outlining his nose or anything, just any part of him that touches the background. Okay, just like this. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about corgis. So corgis, um, there's two different breeds of corgis. There is a Pembroke corgi, and there is a Cardigan corgi. I had no idea that there were two different ones. I thought a corgi was a corgi, but um, apparently there are different kinds. A, the way that you can tell them apart is a Pembroke corgi has a, uh, a cropped tail, which means that it's super short, almost like a little nub. Um, and then a Cardigan corgi has a longer tail. Um, and then I read about how you can remember those things. Uh, a Pembroke corgi, corgi is the one with the short tail, and you can remember Pembroke, like the tail is broken. And a cardigan corgi is the one with the long tail. And a cardigan is a kind of sweater, um, and sweaters have long sleeves, so you can remember long sleeves, long tail. All right, friends, so I have finished outlining the outside perimeters of my art. Um, so I only outlined anything that touches the background. So not like the bone over here or anything, just anything that touches the background. I also outlined these hearts. If you don't want the hearts, that's totally fine. Just paint over them with your blue paint, okay? Remember, this is your art. So if you don't like the way the hearts look, get rid of them. All right, so now that I've got that outline, I am going to take my big brush and I'm going to fill in the rest. So don't forget when you're filling in the background, you also want to paint the edges here. This is what I mean by the edges, okay? So you know as you get over to the edge, just go over this side and paint that. Um, it's important to paint that just because when you hang up your beautiful artwork, you can actually still see the sides. Um, if you don't want to paint it, that's no problem, but just keep in mind that you will be able to see the sides of your painting as it's hanging. Okay, so when I'm done with the background, I am just gonna wash off my brush and dry it on my paper towel. Okay, now we wanna add some, uh, some shade around the corgi. So how we're gonna do that is just take our plain blue, okay? And again, use your thin brush. It's kind of like when we did the shading, the gray on his body. We're going to do the same thing just around him with some blue. So you're going to take some plain cobalt blue, okay, and just outline the side here. And if your paint, the blue paint, the light one, is still wet, that's great because it's going to start blending. If it's not still wet, just take a little bit more paint of that light blue and just start blending it in. Okay, it's gonna make like an ombre effect, kind of fade out a little bit nicer. Okay, and I'm just gonna add that shade along the bottom, because that's where the shadow would be cast if you were sitting, right? And I'm also just gonna put a little bit up here toward his left ear. I'm going to blend it too. 
All right, and so I've made a little mistake. I got some blue here on the bone. No prob, guys. Acrylic paint is great, and it covers up almost anything with one coat. And if it doesn't cover it up with one coat, just put two coats of white. Kind of, kind of like uh, white out. All right, so I'm just gonna take my white, fix up that little mistake really quick. And then, voila, perfect. If you want to make that shadow going along the entire corgi, feel free to do so. I'm only going to do it on the left half, primarily in the bottom. All right, so I'm going to fill in the hearts and his ears now. That is step three. Um, so here's a third fun fact here for you. Um, corgis are herder dogs. So a herder dog is um, used on a farm. Actually, I will continue that thought in one minute. Um, so I have a little bit of pink here. I'm going to mix it with some white. Again, make it as light or as dark as you want. Okay? I want them pretty light. I think this is a good color. If you want it lighter, go for it. You want it darker, go for it. Okay? And I'm just going to start by filling in, in his ears and the hearts. So anyway, corgis are herder dogs. Herder dogs um, are primarily used on farms or like by shepherds when they had sheep. Uh, or sheep, I'm sorry. And um, the dogs would round up all of the cattle, so all the sheep, all of, I guess, the goats, the cows, things like that. And how they would do that is they would run in circles along big crowds of animals until they all started to come together. Um, so if your dog, if you have a corgi or a herder dog, and you notice that they like to run circles around you and your family, they were probably a herder breed. So that's pretty cool. Corgis are also super short. Um, which I read was great because when they want an animal to move, like a cow or something, and they're not moving, then they can kind of like nip at their ankles, you know, make them, make them move. They're also great short because when the cattle, like cows and um, sheep and everything, when they kick back at whatever's nipping at their ankle, the corgis are so short that they typically miss. So I guess they, uh, they really are an ideal breed for herding. All right, so I have to make some more pink. I'll just match that. Fill in those hearts. Again, if you don't want these hearts, just uh, paint over them with that light blue you use in the background. Or I guess you can make them other shapes, like if you wanted to make them stars or something. Remember, this is your art. I'm just guiding you. Make sure you make enough paint, because I totally did it the first two times. All right, and when you're done filling in those hearts and that, those ears, you're going to use that plain pink. You're going to do the same thing. We have a lot of shading today. So shading, I'm going to shade the bottom of these hearts. Kind of mix them with that light pink. I want it to be subtle, so nothing crazy. I'm also going to do that dark pink right where his ears meet his head. Kind of making like a shadow here. Make him look a little bit more 3D. So now I've got the hearts done, I've got his ears done, and I want to paint his um, body, the rest of the body. It's not supposed to be white. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to take that light brown, it's called raw sienna, and that dark brown, it's called burnt sienna. Actually, it's your medium brown. And you're going to mix them half and half, so you should have an equal amount of both on your plate. Okay, just mix up the two. Again, if you want them to be a little bit more orange, you can use the plain raw sienna, which is the light brown, or you can put a little bit of burnt sienna if you don't want as much as I have in. You can make him darker if you want to, whatever you want. So I'm gonna go with this nice tone of brown that I got from mixing those two. I'm gonna take my small brush and I'm gonna start in with his hind legs. So really, really carefully, this is a small edge here, I'm going to fill in his back legs. All right, so I'm gonna get the other one. Okay, so another corgi fact. 
Corgi means dwarf dog, apparently. So Corgi comes from two Welsh words, cor, which means, some people think it means either um, watch or gatherer, which would explain, you know, him being a herder dog. And some people think that cor in Welsh means dwarf. A dwarf is like, uh, usually in like folk tales or literature, um, a, let's see, I looked up the definition to describe it to you. It is a member of a mythical race of short, stocky, human-like creatures. Um, they're in Snow White. So if you have ever seen Snow White, you know the set Seven Dwarves. They are short. Kind of like the Corgi. It's pretty short. So Cor can mean either watch or gather or dwarf. We're not really sure. And Gi apparently means dog. G-I. Gi. In um, Welsh. So we're just going to outline everything again. Don't worry if you get inside of his glasses. We're painting those black later. Black will cover everything up. All right, so I did one coat of that brown. I think it looks a little bit light in some areas, though, so I'm just going to go through and do another coat in some places. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to do it because I want it to be a little bit more solid, not so streaky. Another way to help with this is if you mix your paint with a little bit of white, usually it makes it a little so more solid. But again, it'll also make that brown lighter. And I wanted it to be this darker color. Okay, so I'm just going to take my darkest brown. It is called a raw umber. I'm just going to add some shading right where the ear meets the head. And again on the other side here. Right, and I'm going to add some shading down by his back legs, where they touch his chest, both sides. And then, last place I'm going to put shading with this is right above this bone, and right on the other side too. Okay, so you can wash your brush off and dry it. We are going to move on to... The corgi's eyes, his nose, his glasses, the outline. So you're going to need your small brush for this. What I usually do is I'll get it wet and dry it off. And while it's damp, you can kind of pull into a point like that. Makes it a little bit sharper. While you're outlining, you want to just lightly drag your brush. So if you press down here, I'm going to show you show you what happens when you press down with your brush on a paper plate. So you have this small brush. If you just lightly drag your hand, you've got a nice thin line, right? Now if you press down, it's going to be a lot, a lot thicker, okay? So if you want a thin outline, you've got to not put so much pressure. And if you want a thick outline, you can press down, okay? So we're going to use the black, paint in his eyes, his glasses, his nose, the outline. While I do that, this is my favorite corgi fact that I learned, is that corgis are called the enchanted dog. Um, they're called the enchanted dog because according to Welsh legends, corgis were used by the fairies and the elves. So apparently the elves and the fairies used to use their corgis as steeds, like horses. The fairy warriors would use them. Um, Apparently, too, they use them to pull their um, their carriages, their coaches, they're actually called. The carriages that, uh, you know, Cinderella rode in. Remember that pumpkin turns into that carriage? It's called a coach. So they kind of use them like horses, apparently, the fairies. And I thought that was a really cool fact about corgis. All right, so my friends, I know it is hard to outline a lot. You can try it with your brush or if you have a Sharpie marker at home, feel free to do it with the Sharpie marker. Um, the only thing I'm going to tell you about using the shar Sharpie marker is that your canvas should be completely dry before you use it. So if you stick a Sharpie into wet paint, it's going to ruin your Sharpie. Just as a heads up. 
I'm gonna use my paintbrush. I usually put, you'll notice I put my pinky out like that. I think it makes my hand a little bit more steadier because you know sometimes your hand shakes while you're trying to paint. That's the worst. So this is what my corgi looks like when I'm all done outlining. Um, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna sign my painting now. I always sign my paintings and I put the date on them. You can put the date on the back. That way, when you are painting great, great paintings like you are now, that in the future, you're gonna get some more skills. You're gonna really impress yourself. But then when you look back, you're gonna say, wow, I can't believe, you know, I painted this and I was only seven years old or something like that. I always date them. So I'm gonna put my signature down here. While I do that, my other fun fact is that Queen Elizabeth, Queen of England, um, she has had more than 30 corgis in her life. She's in her 90s though, so she's had a long life to uh, have corgis. It's a lot of corgis though. I wonder how you remember all their names. Another thing I was thinking about is like the fairy fact. I wonder if fairy cattle, you know, they're talking about using corgis cattle for their animals. Do you think that they had wings? Cows with wings? I wonder. All right, so our last step is we're just going to let everything dry a little bit because we have to put some shines in the eyes and on the nose and that requires plain white. Um, and you guys know if the black is wet and you have wet white paint, it's just going to mix and become gray. So give it a couple of minutes to dry, um, but you're going to add those shines um, when they are dry. You're going to put some in the eyes, the nose, there's like little dots on each side of the glasses. You can put them in the hearts. So I'm just going to be doing filling those in. Um, my last fun fact, which I think is super great, is there is something called SoCal Corgi Beach Day. That is in Huntington Beach. That's in the state of California. Um, so it happens three times a year. Apparently everybody just goes to the beach for the day and brings their pet corgi. So the first time it happened, I think only 15 corgis showed up. And now, that's, I think it said the last one attracted over 1,100 corgis. And people flew from as far as Japan to go to this event. But I mean, that sounds like the perfect day, right? A beach filled with corgis. <laughs> I'm in. All right, friends, that is it for our cute corgi video. Thank you so much for coming to camp today. I cannot wait to see how your canvases look. You guys always do such a great job. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you soon.